So you have a chapter on politics and you talk about hidden motives in people's political behavior. Talk about that chapter a little bit and then apply the analysis to what we see going on. Okay, right so for, first I have to say, some areas of life, we all sort of do the same things. And in other areas of life, we do different things. And so when we do different things, we're more aware of the of the fact that we do different things and we're more eager to explain other people's differences via their mistakes. And so hidden motives is one class of mistakes. So in areas where we do different things and have conflicts, we are quite ready to open, open to the idea that other people are making mistakes and other people are biased and other people have hidden motives. And that's gonna be the case in politics. Politics is obviously an area where we have conflicts. And so the other side is gonna be a plausible candidate to us of people who are falling for biases and mistakes and who have motives that they aren't aware of because we're happy to attribute the other side to their terrible mistakes and motives. Whereas for our side, we don't think that needs to be invoked because you know we're doing the reasonable thing and they're doing the unreasonable thing. Now, in other areas of life, like say medicine, we all do kind of the same thing. And this makes us much more blind to our hidden motives there because we can all be following a hidden motive that we're denying and then not really notice it because we don't see people doing the different thing. <laughs> yeah. So for example, in medicine, we say, the usual thing we say is we go to the doctor or the hospital to get well. That is, we get sick and they can make us well and that's why we go. And since we all say that and we all wanna support everybody else for saying that, we don't question it very much. What if that's not why we go? And so in the book we say, actually why you go to the doctor is to show that you care about other people and let them show they care about you which isn't a terrible thing, but it's not the thing you admit and talk about. So, but you're really blind to that. And it'll take a bit to convince you on this podcast. If you've probably just heard the last few seconds and said, what, Hanson's crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because that sounds crazy. I've read the book and I was thinking, <laughs> man, that sounds crazy. <laughs> right, yeah. but uh, because you're gonna, so in politics, you're gonna be more open to the idea. At least some other people have hidden motives and that's why you have to be careful here to be too eager to jump on the other people instead of yourself. But so let's walk through politics. Politics, we say, why do you do politics? So if you ask people why they're involved in politics, the easy answer they will give is they're trying to help yeah. their nation or their city or their world. Uh, you know, they could just ignore politics and go about their lives, but they are altruistic, caring people who are willing to put a little time and energy into helping the world through their political action. That's the simple story. And that's the story most people would want to tell about politics. Um, but there's a number of puzzles that don't fit so well with that story. And just like in all the other chapters, we have the puzzles. So we want to walk through the puzzles that don't fit so well with the simple story in politics. Now, obviously, one thing is people are pretty gullible about politics. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, try to sell them a crappy used car, they're going to look at that askance and, and perhaps, you know, not buy it. But in politics, they lower their standards often and they're willing to believe a lot of pretty tenuous, loose reasoning, et cetera. You're yeah. often pretty emotional about it. People care a lot about the politics of people they're associated with. So, you know, many, just a survey I saw recently saying, you know, a large fraction of parents would be disappointed if their child married someone from the other political party or even had a really romantic relationship with somebody from the other political party. Interesting. Uh, so people have enormous, you know, caring and concern about having people around them share their politics. Um, politicians mostly have to take positions. Now, you know, politicians like work behind the scenes, they craft deals, they make compromises, they can work the system and voters almost care almost nothing about that. <laughs> they don't reward politicians for being good behind the scenes and making things happen. They just want to know what positions they've taken, yeah. even on positions on topics they can't do anything about. So like in the United States, the president can't do much about education, but you know what? Everybody cares about the president's position on education or presidential candidates position on education. And uh, another puzzling thing about politics is that uh, there's a remarkable correlation across topics. So, uh, you know, there are thousands of political and policy dimensions in the world, and yet you can explain a large fraction of the variation in those opinions by just one dimension of political position, left versus right. Yeah. But why should there be this one dimension that explains so much variation in politics? That's kind of crazy because it's just a big complicated world. Uh, and so, We'd say uh, in, in the book that you are sort of being a Dudley do-right in politics. That's your pretense. I am a Dudley do-right. I go out and make the world better. 
and was saying, what's well, you're actually a little closer to what we'd call an apparatchik. That's a name for an old Soviet politician yep. who, worked, who worked the system. A bureaucrat, so, right? A yeah, bureaucrat, well, like not a, just a bureaucrat, but a faithful political loyalist. Yeah. Who, you know, supports the party. So there's an old story about how there was a meeting and they were discussing many things. And then at one point, the name of Stalin came up and he was alive at the time and important. And everybody was eager to show, yay, Stalin. So they all stood up and started clapping. Yay, Stalin. He's not in the room, but they're clapping for Stalin. They keep clapping for 10 minutes. And of course, near the end, people wonder, is it time to stop clapping for Stalin? <laughs> and of course, they each think, well, I don't want to be the first one to sit down and stop clapping for Stalin, because that'll yeah. make me less loyal than the other guys. So yeah. one person was the first person to sit down and stop clapping. Then the rest of them go, I can sit down and stop clapping. And of course, that night, that guy went to Siberia. Yep. Yeah. I think there's actually, I, I went back, I, you know, people have constantly are citing, talking about things being Orwellian and blah, blah, blah. I actually went back and read 1984 a couple months ago. I think there's a scene in 1984 about exactly what you're describing. They're, they're having some sort of political rally and they're literally, the leaders are scanning the crowd to see who is not clapping and, and celebrating. Strongly enough, yeah. Strongly enough, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So that's the key idea that in politics, what your main motivation, even if you're not aware of it, is to show loyalty to your allies, to yeah. your sides. Your tribe. So now you may have multiple tribes that overlap that you're part of, but for each one, you're trying to show loyalty. Yeah. And that means uh, you're not that rational about it. You're a bit irrational about your loyalty because even if your side believes something that doesn't quite make sense, it, it's more important for you to show loyalty to your side than to try to like help your side make more sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Well, you know, this thing we've been saying, that doesn't make so much sense. How about we switch to that? That doesn't sound so loyal, uh, even though, of course, you're actually helping your side. And so you're more eager to just, you know, my country right or wrong, take your side. And so that explains a lot of these puzzles in politics, explains why we care so much about the people around us sharing our political views, why we get emotional, why we're not very careful about analyzing these things, uh, explains why there's this one dimension spectrum in politics. Uh, and, you know, that's the story here. So that means we are not very careful and reasonable in politics. My, my ex co blogger once called this, said the phrase, politics is the mind killer, which is evoking a phrase from the Dune novels. Yep. Great, as, uh, great, you know, great novel. Some of, my, some of my favorite books of all time. Right. And so that means all of us don't or sort of lose our minds a bit when we talk about politics. Now, there's other topics we also lose our minds about. It's not just politics, but we all say oh, lose our mind a bit about romance, yeah. for example. Yeah, sure. It's a little crazy there, but sure. you know, we, we aren't in as much conflict there, so we don't. Sports. People pick on lose other their mind about, about sports. Yeah. Right, but in politics, there's the clear opponents, and so we're more willing to notice that they've lost their mind and point it out. 